Hi everyone! Welcome to a review video with Kim Tech. My name is Kim. Today I'll be reviewing the Synology DS1821 Plus after using it for over one month. This feedback is from my personal use, so my thoughts may be different from yours. By the way, this is my first time setting up a home server. It was very exciting. All links will be in the description box below along with timestamps so you can skip to the sections you want. Okay, here was the situation. I have all these external hard drives from storing images over the years and making actual copies of them in case the physical drives died. Well, it's getting a bit out of hand. Anyway, long story short, since I'm recording videos, I need a lot more space, storage space, so we decided to invest in a server to consolidate and automate our data storage. After watching several YouTube videos, Synology seems to be the brand for home use for its ease of setup and ease of use. The lowest recommendation from Synology is the DS1522 Plus, which is a 4 bay, but it can be expanded to 9 bays. A notch above that is the DS1821 Plus, an 8 bay NAS that can be expanded to be 18 bays. The DS18 Plus is a better option for me to start and expand for at least the next few years. I could have saved some money and bought the DS1621 Plus for the exact specs minus the two base, but I decided against it because I don't want to buy such large storage drives even if they're SSDs. For my research, anything above 8 terabyte would be a pain to recover because it would take way too long to rebuild. Space Rex is an awesome YouTube channel that I watch and follow to help me with my setup. Will explains the basics and makes it very easy to understand. He also makes emphasis on security, which is how I ended up with my current setup. Thanks, Will. If you ever watch this video, probably not because I'm such a tiny YouTuber. Anyway, let's start out with the drives I paired this bad boy with. Wait, I mean bad boy. I got two Seagate Iron Wolf 125 4TB SSDs and one Iron Wolf 8TB NAS hard drive. The Iron Wolf SSD, dude, has been such a high demand that it was out of stock when I first ordered it and I got lucky to jump on when the reminder came in and then it was back out of stock. And I've yet to be able to buy more since. But sorry, I digressed. Anyway, my two SSDs are configured with SHR, which is Synology Hybrid RAID for redundancy. Will from SpaceRex recommends that if the setup is less than six disks, then use SHR for RAID 5. I did my own research and SHR is the best setup for me at the moment because it won't have wasted storage if I were to use different size hard drives. Also, the fact that I don't need three drives to have the same redundancy as a RAID 5 is exactly what we need to start. If your setup is more complex with different size drive, then you can use Synology RAID calculator to get an idea of how much storage space you should have. And I have a one 8 terabyte spindle drive as a backup. My Synology can only be accessed via OpenVPN because I didn't want to use Synology Quick Connect. And I also have Synology Photo set up to where it takes all the images in the Photos app and dump them into a folder on my SSDs, where I have it to set to organize my images by the folder of the month the images were taken. Then I will go back and sort out how I want to organize them or delete them at a later time. Now, this is not a polished process yet. I'm still working out the kinks and trying to figure out what works best for us. Plus, as our work process changes, our workflow will also change. However, this works for now, but please feel free to share with me how you guys have your setup or what works best for you. I'd love to see if there's a better method that will also work for us. Because this investment was a bit expensive, we haven't purchased the SSD caching upgrade, the M.2 cards, or the NIC card upgrade. We of course will be upgrading both of these down the line. However, here's my train of thought, okay? It doesn't make sense to pay for them now 
since our internet connection cannot even use 10 gigabit. And I'm currently editing locally on the MacBook just fine and have no problem moving the files to the server after. So the M.2 card is also not needed right now since I'm not working directly off of the server. Overall, I really like the DS1821+. Plus. Aesthetically, I like how it's fully black, no chrome, it's not shiny or glossy. It just looks so cool. And it's actually quiet. My hearing is slightly more sensitive than the average person, so I can validate. This fella sits in our bedroom. Depending on the sources, the decibel readings may be a bit different for various sounds, and decibel is the measurement for the loudness of sounds. However, they are not too far apart from one another. For example, whispering can be as low as 20 dB based on Audiolab, while it's represented at 30 dB on audiology.com for the American Academy of Audiology website and nidcd.nih.gov for the National Institute on Deafness and Other Communication Disorders website. Here are some results from my noise test using the Decibel X app on my iPhone. Please note, this is not a perfect test. Anyway, at 7 a.m. in the morning, I got a reading for one of the bedrooms averaging at 29.1 dB and maxing out at 34.3 dB which is within the range for the average room noise based on the Hearing Health Foundation of 30 dB to 50 dB. After that, I tested the audio decibel of the Tesla while charging in the garage, and it was maxing out at 35.3 dB and averaging at 33.9 dB. Next, moving on to the Synology, the max was 45.4 dB and averaging at 44.1 dB and the phone was sitting one inch away or 2.54 centimeter from the Synology. Then at three feet away from the Synology, the max was 34.7 dB and averaging at 32 dB. I also tested when I was copying 66 gig from the local laptop to the SSD on the Synology and the max dB was 49.6 and it was averaging at 46.5 dB. The setup wasn't difficult. It's no different than a file server once you have it set up. And Synology makes syncing photos so easy. I didn't need to keep the Synology photo app open for the file to upload to the server. Just needed to be running in the background. However, if you want it to be focusing on the sync to make it faster, then you have to have it open and the phone need to be plugged in to charge. So I had this set up before our Tokyo trip last year since I knew I was going to be taking a lot of pictures and I wanted to make it easier for myself when organizing them. At the end of the day during the trip, when we got back to our hotels, I plugged in the phone to charge, opened the OpenVPN app and enabled it, then opened the Synology photo app and left the Synology photo app opened when I was showering and was getting ready for bed. All the images were synced and uploaded to the server without me needing to do much. It also tells me how many pictures are left that needed to be synced if the sync hasn't complete. And do you want to know what's the best part? I didn't lose any image quality and no one else except me has access to my photos. Now, I can edit my videos directly from the DS 1821 plus, but it's a bit laggy sometimes because my internet connection is not fast enough to handle all the files and my laptop is on Wi-Fi. So until I upgrade my internet and add the 10 gigabit on the Synology, my current workflow is to edit the videos locally on my laptop, then move all the assets to the SSD and save the final video and thumbnail to the spindle drive as a backup. Although the workflow is not to where I want it to be yet because it's still trial and error for what works best for us. I am, however, very, very happy that we have a better process in place. I'm definitely looking forward to improving it when the timing is right or more like when we can afford the improvements.
Anyway, hope you all find this video helpful. If you do, please click the thumbs up and subscribe. If you have any questions, please feel free to put it down below. Thank you again for watching and have yourself a nice day or night wherever you are, my buddies. Until next time, bye!